say we will loosen you up and open up this big muscles here. Okay? So here it goes. She is laying on the back and I ask her to lift the hip up and I put this ball, you buy it at the Sportschule, right under the sacrum bone, not into the arch, below where your underwear is, where the crack. I don't know how, I, you know my English is not that good. Like, So anyway, so then you created a little hole in between the mid-back and the ball, right? So now you have to do nothing, just let your body sink in. So just breathe in and out and just allow the gravity to pull it down. And if you give yourself a few minutes, it's just going to beautifully loosen up everything. So normally what people say after this, they are getting a nice, um, you know when you first lay down the lower back is a little bit off the floor, but after this you have a nice connection. It's like ironed out. Let's hope it's going to happen to you too. Okay? So just close your eyes and just breathe normally, yes? Well, I have always trouble to say repetitions and, and timing. Sometimes you want to be there a minute or two, sometimes you want to do more. I would recommend start less and see how your body likes it. Because I never heard anybody whose body didn't like it. You, you cannot hurt yourself with this, it's very safe, it's very protected. But you know, you never know. Individuals are different. We all are different. We have the same number of muscles, bones, and nerves, organs. We have in our organs, but we are all different. Our tolerance, our personality. We move our body as we feel. We move our body as our story was before, the way we've been conditioned culturally physically, what were we introduced to, so, and, and it's wonderful, we all look different, so, but there is a rule, that's the rule of anatomy, and that cannot be uh, neglected. You want? Yeah. I can't really tell, uh, I'm sure a lot of people can't, how inflated is that ball, I mean, if we wanted to get one? That ball is, is, is kind of firm. See, as I'm pinching, it's not... At Sportschale, it called Mikasa 600. M-I-K-A-S-A -A 600. The reason I like this ball because it's very strong, so it doesn't deflate on you. Normally, it comes deflated at Sportschale. And, and also, this, is, this has multiple use. Lots of things you can do good for your body with it. Okay, yes. I have uh, one of those medicine balls that's maybe four to six pounds, it's about that size. The, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, anything rounded. You just want to make sure it's a round thing because you want to put it right where your sacrum bone is and I bought a pelvic for you here, just in case yours is not with you. <laughs> so this is this is your sacrum, can you see it? This is your sacrum bone. And you see here you have two little crack, right? Because it's made out of pieces. You really want to put it under this bone. Because that also pushes this bone a little bit forward and creates movement in these two sides. Which is very important because when you walk forwards, the pelvis should a tiny bit go with it. It's not much movement, but it should go a little bit, should glide. If this joint is stiff or tight, these guys above the spine, they have to do more and then they don't like it. They're going to complain, John. <laughs> I guarantee John have some issues with the sacroiliac joint, that's the joint. That's the sacrum, that's the iliac, and that's the joint. And most of the time when you have back pain, 
people are so obsessed with, oh, I have to strengthen my tummy, I have to strengthen my back. You know, the strength is really not an individual muscle strength. The, our body never works single unit. It's always connection. So we are always as strong as good the relationship between the pieces. So you could have a perfectly strong tummy muscle, back muscle, thigh, you know, everything, but this speaks Hungarian, this speaks German, this is English. They don't have a common language. And most of the time, why? Because at the gym, you work out one at a time, but it's no chance to bring them together. So it's like they learn the solo, but they never learn how to sing as a chorus, sort of speak. Or an orchestra, you know, you have different little uh, instruments, but if they don't play the same music, it's going to be a big noise. Uh, so really, that's what it's meant, uh, happens. How's your foot feels? You're not doing it. <laughs> In general. Okay, so let's just talk about the foot first. So we have the foot which is over here. See I bought, see how many little bones we have in the foot? A lot. It's a chaos here. And then it connects to your lower leg bone. So this has to move when you walk. Now most people don't do this little flexion extension when they're walking. Most importantly, you don't do it because you sit all day long, so your tushy muscles are a little bit atrophied. <laughs> Size doesn't matter in this case. It could look wonderful and yet very dysfunctional. <laughs> So, if because, you know, you, your body weight is back there because you sit, right? So you stand up, your body has a very hard time to go forwards, which that would be the next step, because taking a step forward requires my gluteal muscles to pushing me forwards and using my toe down there. Now, if that not happens, my ankle is going to walk stiff. So most people are walking with nicely, you know, stiff ankle. Very, you know, just like this. Right? Instead of that. Can you see the difference? Okay, that's why you want to walk backwards a lot. That's my second million dollar advice. At home, Walk backwards, go to the kitchen backwards, bathroom backwards, everywhere backwards. Because if you were sitting all day long, your glute muscles were completely exhausted, you have to give them some blood. Because if you do that every day, and that's all you're doing, and poor thing, that's what you're all day doing, you need to kind of counterbalance that activity, right? And trust me, these things are tried out. I'm a physiotherapist for 35 years or more, and I've been trained in Europe. It's a little bit more common sense than, I would say, the education here. It's a wonderful education here, but it's not as practical and very specialized, you know, very few times when they look at the whole body or, or you. You know, they, they treat your foot, not you. And that's a problem. So, so these things, what I'm telling you, it worked for thousands of people. Simple, doesn't cost a penny. So I'm saving money for you. Bad economy, we don't have money for the doctors. And you can save a lot of bills if you listen to these few things. So foot, waking up the foot, and walking backwards. Put that little ball under your hip. Yes, my dear? So when you walk, you want to just kind of want to roll? Yeah. Why don't you stand up and walk for me? <laughs> <laughs> so let's see how does she walk. How I so, walk? 
Yeah, just show me how normal you are. <laughs> okay, come back. Good. Okay. So, what do you think? Tell me. Step. Tight. Step. Stiff. See, and that's what I'm saying. If it looks good, that it's harmonious, you can tell that. Because then it shows. You can tell if she's stiff or not. I don't know what your story, but you know, you probably had to sit a lot and, you know, whatever. For that's what. Three and a half years. I'm sorry? For about three and a half years as a student. As a student, <laughs> right. That students do that. Yeah. So, you know, when you're walking, first of all, uh, okay, I'm not telling anything more. Have a seat and we'll see after what we're doing now if your walking is improving, okay? Okay, now, please stand up. Yes. Now, first tell me how your back feels. What do you feel? I feel like Did you hear that? The yeah. hip sank down to the floor. Is it a good feeling? Yes. Okay, now, the way we get up from the bed is... Yes, okay, this is one way, but the other way, what lately I even like more, just a little bit rock, like rocking like a baby. Relax, don't, don't squeeze anything. Relax. <laughs> so you really want to be completely relaxed. See, one of the problems when we adults, we are so much in charge, in control. And that's, what the, that's a big problem because we forget to be, you know, multidimensional. So in the bed, rocking, 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 and at some point, roll on your side, drop your leg, and use your elbow as a leverage to get up. <laughs> Now, I come here, both of you, and John, you're going to be the next one. Okay, so um, I'm going to demonstrate you something, and don't take anything personal, and all I'm asking you over there to stand on three points, big toe, little toe, heel. Put your feet under your pelvis. Preferably parallel, maybe a tiny bit out. And just feel that three points. But these two ladies, I'm going to ask to take the body weight back on the heel. And what I'm going to do, don't take anything personal. I push them a little bit. Right? <laughs> so, what happened when I pushed them because their weight was back on the heel? Lost the balance. What happened first before they lose the balance? The pelvis oh. went forwards. Now, I asked her to put more weight on the toes, so go to that big toe, little toe heel, and then I repeat the same thing. What happens? They just went forward. She fell off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, so so what happened, and just stay here, please. And John, come join us here in the journey. Okay, so what happened is, because the body weight was back on the heel, where most people were, this young lady, what is your name? Shana. Shana. Shana has way back on the heel her body weight. The lower back becomes automatically very weak. Because the law of anatomy, when you're standing on those three points, big toe, little toe, heel, the chain, the muscles going up, they perfectly engaged. If you put your body weight back to the heel, they losing each other. Now I just want you to do this, drop your arm and try to kind of growing with the top of the head. The shoulder just should be relaxed and your arm should hanging down. So basically we operate between four floors. 
One floor is your bottom of your foot on the three points.